All right, my name is Georgie, and this is my presentation about violence in dreams. I feel the person, without even thinking twice about it, without a single second of regretting my action. Am I a bad person? Am I crazy? No, because we all have done it. Before you start arguing with me and start proving that you're innocent, I'm gonna take my time and welcome you all to the world of violent video games, the virtual reality, where the violence is the key for the victory. What is the difference between killing a person in real life and what's the difference between killing a person in, real, uh, in the virtual reality? So that's a question for you all. Does anybody have, have an answer? Well, it's quite obvious, right? Like, when you kill in virtual reality, you don't kill a person, like, it's not a person, it's a game. But when you kill a real person, you take somebody else's life. So, uh, but the bad thing is when you start integrating one's principle into another. So when you play a lot of video games and you start like integrating video games principles into the second field. So in this presentation, I'm gonna focus on three main things. How addicting are the violent video games? How to set the boundaries between the violent video games? And how will violent video games affect the future if this tendency will continue? So, um, according to uh, Zimmer Freud, we're subconsciously addicted to violence. Like, so subconsciousness looks like an iceberg. Like, when the top of the iceberg is, like, you know, small part, and the bottom of the iceberg is the biggest part. And the subconscious is the bottom part of the iceberg. And I think that we're subconsciously addicted to violence, and we don't even, like, um, agree on that. Well, a scientist called Whitney Decamp agreed that uh, people, every single rampage killer who, who killed people, they were, every single rampage killers were addicted to violent video games. And this is really crazy statistic because acknowledging that if a person plays violent video games, they're more than likely to kill somebody and be a rampage killer, right? Okay, you guys want to come So another study done by Science Direct that Children who play violent video games are more than likely to be like more than likely to be bullied. Yeah, you can, yeah. are more than likely to be bullied, or uh, are more than likely to uh, to experience domestic violence. And answer number two, which can I can come up with, is that we all crave for like violence, and we're like um, we the fact that we cannot do it in real life it stops us. For example, if we go back to like biblical story of like. Uh, Forbidden fruit, Adam and Eve. They did that because they were forbidden to eat the forbidden fruit. They did just because of this. Or to make the example even simpler, what does a child do when you told, tell them not to do something? Absolutely the opposite, right? They touch the button, they pull the switch. Why? They always wanted to do that? No, just because we told them not to do that. And that's when they get like, oh, I will do this. So that's another reason I can come up with. So there's always a solution, right? Uh, I think one of the solutions is encouraging positive video games. A study by, done by the University of Florida says if we promote uh, positive video games, we'll decrease the violence. And there are a lot of positive, like famous video games, such as like FIFA, NFL, and like NBA, uh, PES Evolution Soccer, and others which are non-violent and really popular. Second um, option I can come up with is that to educate children about, like, from the early ages. You can come up, it's in my presentation, uh, uh, speech class. So to educate uh, children about uh, how, how, what effect to get from, like, violent video games. Because once they get a bad effect, that's bad for them. They, have, they should get only good part of the games, not the bad one. So um, if we raise awareness about violent video games, what advice should they get? from the early ages, we can prevent a lot of bad things and we can prevent a lot of things. But it is interesting what will happen in the future if we stay ignorant and if we don't do anything about it. So, uh, biological effects. Hazen Yosef, uh, yeah. Hazen Yosef did this kind of study. He said that violent video games increase uh, psychological erosion, heart rate, blood pressure and stress hormones, such as epinephrine and noradrenaline. So this basically proves that if we, if we are a violent game player, our like uh, biological condition is worse and it's more than likely to get like worse, you know? And the second st study done by the same bi biologist, uh, Mr. Hassan, uh, states that it reduces the respiratory sinus arrhythmia and is linked to antisocial behavior, which can be uh, caused by violent video games. 
um, a second uh, so like um, answer I can come up with like what will happen in the future if we don't do anything is that more crimes and suicide. According to uh, Whitney DeCamp, which was the last uh, so researcher that I mentioned, he said that every single rampage killer was known to be like player of violent video games. What if this correlation is true? What if this correlation leads to the positive? And what if if violent games will increase, the pop, like the rampage killers will increase? That would be really bad. And the second bad thing that can happen is that uh, if the Hazen Yosef was right about his research and it really uh, affects the stress hormones, people will become more stressed. And stress is directly connected to the suicide. So suicide rates will re increase as well. Um, in the end, I just want to say that people are highly addicted to violent video games, and this this will cause a lot of things in future. Such as I mentioned, like anti-socialism, or more crimes, or more suicides. So we should uh, raise awareness about it. We should talk more about it to uh, educate children. And in the end, I just want to say that this world is too small for the violence, but always big enough for peace and love. Thank you.